morning. Welcome to the Laddering Message for the World Ministry. And this is uh, Present Truth Series, Part 6, The Early Rain Experience. Now we're going to continue with Part A. Part 6, I'm sorry, not Part A, Part B, uh, rather. So this is a Present Truth Series, Part 6, B, The Early Rain Experience. Now we're going to start with the candlesticks. Yesterday we dealt with the altar of burnt offering, the laver. Now we're going to move on to the holy place and to the sanctification experience lifestyle. So let's go to 1 John chapter 3 and verses 5 to 6. 1 John chapter 3 and verses 5 to 6. And this is what the Bible says. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. So we know that the sanctuary represents Jesus Christ, and in Christ there is no sin. If you are in Christ, and Christ is in you, you sin not, the Bible says. But when you sin, you're not in Him. It's, it's plain and simple. So if you are in Christ, you don't have the desire to sin. Sin is, you have the, the enmity between God's seed and Satan's seed, or sin itself. So this is the work of the gospel. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 17. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 17. The Bible says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by what? Faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. So for Christ to dwell in you, it has to be by faith. And this is where we get the, the message righteousness by faith. This, this, this is one of the verses, but, but this is salvation language. For Christ to dwell in your hearts, it has to be by faith. And that ye being rooted and grounded in love. So to have true love, to be grounded in love, it has to be by through faith. Alright? Now when we look at the sanctuary, the holy place, everything is gold. And gold has a meaning spiritually. Alright? And we're going to see what gold represents. Now let's go to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6. Galatians 5 and verse 6. The Bible says, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. So faith, in order for you to have faith, it works by love. Without love, you cannot have faith. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 7. 1 Peter 1 and verse 7. The Bible says in 1 Peter 1 verse 7 that the trials of your faith being much more precious than of what? Gold that perishes though it be tried with fire might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So we see that faith represents gold. Gold represents faith in the Bible. And for your faith to be strong, to be pure, it has to be tried, like the gold tried in the fire. That's why Christ Jesus wants us to buy the gold tried in the fire, which we don't want to buy. All right? I'm speaking for myself and others. All right? We have to be honest. It's, 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 it's a, you know, nobody wants to go to trials. People want to have faith, but they don't want to go to trial. They don't want their faith to be tested, but this is how God operates. So the goal that you see in the sanctuary, in the holy place, represents faith and love. All right. So for you to be in Christ, in the sanctuary by faith, you have to have the goal. You have to have faith in order for you to be in Christ, in Christ in you. All right. Now let's, uh, I just want to read a quotation from, a sentence from um, the Spirit of Prophecy. Um, from Christ Triumphant, page 80, paragraph 5. And I believe this is one of the last um, sentence, or the second last sentence, but this is what she says. She says, you want that faith that is represented as gold. So here we see faith in the Bible, which is gold, 
in the spirit of prophecy testify the same thing. She, that's another witness. She's another witness that faith represents gold. So in the sanctuary, like I said, the holy place, you see everything is gold. The table of showbread, the candlesticks, the, the altar of sweet incense is covered with gold. We know the um, candlesticks is pure gold, but the, the gold represents love and faith, faith that works by love. So we need to have the love in our hearts for, for us to, and also the faith for us to be in Christ, the Bible teaches. Okay, now 1 Peter, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 4 and verses 12 and 13. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verses 12 and 13. The Bible says, Behold, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Now this text is, is, it's, is very strong because the fiery trials that we go through, sometimes we say, why us, why now? But it is a purification process. God is in control. His hand is under the wheels within the wheels of our lives. So he's in control. So the, the, the fiery trials don't think it's, 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 it's a strange thing. Me, myself, I think the same thing. Why me? But I have to remind myself of this verse, this text, to encourage myself through the Word of God. Now let's go to the candlesticks. Let's go to the book of Zephaniah. What does the candlesticks also represent? We know when we teach the sanctuary message to others, we usually say, and I'm not saying it's wrong, we usually uh, think that the, the candlesticks just represents shining the light of Christ to the world, which is true, or witnessing, all right? But there's more meat into it. Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 12. Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 12, because this is the lesson of of this, uh, the, the, the title of this presentation is the early rain experience. We need to have this experience in order for us to receive the outpouring of the light of rain in the Sunday law crisis. Now, Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 12, we want to know what does the candlesticks also represent in our part. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with what? Candles. And punish the men that are settled at their lease that say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. All right, now God here is gonna search Jerusalem with what? Candles. Candle is, 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 is used to search, all right? To search Jerusalem. This is talking about judgment. God is judging, he's searching Jerusalem, God's people, to see who are worthy to be in the name, in the book of, the books of life, in the books of, Damnation. So God is judging with the candlesticks. He's searching. That's what you do with candles. Let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 20, verse 27. Proverbs 20 and verse 27. The Bible says, The spirit of man is the what? Candle of the Lord, searching all in searching all the inward parts of the belly. So the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. So when the Lord searched Jerusalem with candles, he's searching man's heart with the spirit of man. Because the spirit of man records every single thing that we do in our lives. Either thinking and thoughts and action and words, everything. God searched man with the, he searched us with the candle through the spirit of man. Let me read it again. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Amen. So the candlesticks and the sanctuary is also to search your own hearts, to search your own heart, to see if you have any wickedness in your heart. Because the natural man doesn't want to search his own heart. The natural man doesn't know that he is a sinner. The carnal man doesn't know that he's wicked. All right, and this is where hypocrisy comes. Now let's go to Psalms 139 and verse 23 and 24. Psalms 139, verses 23 and 24. The Bible says, Search me, O God, 
and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So David says, God, search me. Because David doesn't know his own heart. Oh God, know my heart. Try me. That's how God can reveal what is in your heart by, by the fiery trials. Because in good times, everything looks perfect. But in trials, Sister White says, during crisis, that's when your character is revealed. So you see your true self, the heart. The heart. So God is going to try you to let you know what is in your heart, what is in your thought. And this is a prayer we need to pray. If we want to have the holy place experience, the early rain experience, we need to have this kind of prayer. To ask God to search our hearts and try us to see if there's any wicked way in our hearts. So we can give it to Christ. Because we don't want the natural heart. We want Christ's heart. And that's what God is asking from us. Give me your heart. Let's, um, I just want to read another quotation from Sister White, uh, The Spirit of Prophecy. Our high calling, page 162, paragraph 6. Our high calling, page 162, paragraph 6. And she says, Let us as Christ's followers search our hearts as with a lighted candle to see what manner of spirit we are of. For our present and eternal good, let us criticize our actions to see how they stand in the light of the law of God. So this is an honest Christian. This is the, 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 the Christian that is humble. That is humble and know that he or she is cold. By praying the same prayer as the publican, Lord have mercy on me a sinner. To, to, to ask God to search their own hearts to see if there's any wicked way. So we need to search our hearts to see if there's any wicked way in our hearts. Because that's how the enemy has the key, the access to enter into our lives and create chaos. And this, this is why, because there's secret sins in the heart. So God wants to get rid of those sins. So we need to give it, to, give it all to Christ. Now let's move to the table of showbread. The table of showbread. Let's go to John chapter 6 and verse 35. We already know this text. We know that Christ is the bread of life. The Bible says in verse 35, John 6. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So we know Christ is the bread, the showbread, the bread and the holy place. It represents Christ. And we know that Christ is the Word of God. Let's go to John chapter 1 verse 1. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So we know this is talking about Christ. Christ is the Word. So Christ is the bread of life, and He's the Word. So therefore the bread of life is the Word of God. We need to feed, we need to eat the little book. Now let's go to Psalms 34 in verse 8. The Bible says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. So we need to taste the Lord. We need to eat the little book. We need to eat the bread of life and see that the Lord is good. Now let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 29. Matthew 11 verse 29. The Bible says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. So, we need to come to Christ and learn of Him by eating the bread, by studying the Word. That's how you can learn of Christ, by studying His Word. And then you shall find rest, the refreshing. And put them into practice. Now let's move to the altar of sweet incense. And remember, this is, this is the section of sanctification. Sanctification. We need to search our hearts, the candlesticks. We need to reflect the light of Christ. We need to have the goal, which is faith, and which worketh by love, that purifies the soul. And now we need to feed on the bread. We need to um, study Jesus Christ and learn of Him and find rest. All right. And remember, everything is is it has goal. We need to ask God to give us the love, the goal, the faith, to 
to search our hearts because we naturally we don't want to do it. So we need to ask God to give us the love to do it. We need to ask God to give us the love to study His Word, to eat the bread. And now we need to ask God to give us the love to pray, the, the, the goal, the faith, so we can pray. Because the natural heart doesn't want to do it. There's times my I don't want to pray. There's times I don't want to study. There's times, you know, I feel lazy. This is not Christ-like. So I need to ask God for give, to give me the goal or the love or the faith for me to do these things. Because Christ, we can do all things through Christ, which strengthen us. Now we're going to move to the altar of sweet incense. Sweet incense. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17. And we know the Bible says pray without ceasing. And we need to understand praying without ceasing. All right. So let's go to Psalm 34 and verse 6. Psalm 34 and verse 6. The Bible says, This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and said him, I mean, and saved him out of all his trouble. So God is gonna hear the poor man's cry. And we all already know that the poor man, those who come to God with a broken heart, a contract spirit, and the, those who are poor realize that. They need Christ. They need a Savior. They cannot save themselves. They are poor of Christ. God is going to hear those prayers. So when we come to Him with repentance, through repentance, we need to make sure that we have the sorrow of sin. All right? Let's go to um, verse, seven, um, verse 15 in the same um, chapter, Psalms 34. Verse 15, the Bible says, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Now, we just heard that God is going to deliver the poor from his trouble. Now we see that it's the righteous. That he's going to deliver from their trouble. So here we see that the poor, those who are poor in heart, blessed are the poor, those are the righteous. Let's move on to verse um, 18. And the Lord says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save such as be of a contrite spirit. So God is near them, those who have a contrite spirit, a broken heart, a sorrow for sin. All right, it's not just Lord, please forgive me for this, and then you do it again, over and over. You have to make sure you have, you come with a sincere heart, knowing that this is what this caused your Savior to be crucified. This is what caused God to grieve in in, in your family and in men around you. This is what caused um, 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 chaos in the world. It might be small, but it's still sin. Eve just ate a fruit, but it's still sin. And we're living in this chaotic world. So we have to have the sorrow of sin and broken heart. And God will hear and be near you. Let's go to, to Colossians chapter 4 and verse 12. Colossians 4 and verse 12. The Bible says, Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring, fervently for you in prayers that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. So in prayer, we need to pray fervently. Fervent means hot. So we need to be hot in the Lord. We need to pray fervently. All right, not just a two second prayer. Thank you, Lord, and, and, and that's it. We need to pray. We need to have a connection with, with God fervently. We need to remember the, 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 the altar of sweet incense. They, they had to put fire for the incense to for the smoke to come up. So the prayer needs to be fervently. Pray without ceasing. All right. We need to spend time with God, more time in prayer. Sometimes we need to put aside the, 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 the Bible for a moment and to pray. I'm not saying don't study the Bible. We need to pray more and, and have a connection. A, a, a real connection with, with God and pour our hearts to Him, our cares to Him through faith, through the gold, and by love. 
Now we're going to move to the most holy place experience, the most holy place, which is glorification. Glorification. And this is what God wished um, from us through Christ. Now let's go to the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 9 and verse 4. Hebrews 9 and verse 4. We know in the most holy place you have the Ark of the Covenant, uh, which covered with the uh, golden mercy seat. And inside you have the, the rod of Aaron, the, um, the Ten Commandments, and the, the pot that has the manna. So what does that mean? What does all these three things mean? Now, and, and also, most importantly, we see the uh, Shekinah glory, the glory of God. Now, if Christ is in the most holy place right now, judging us, the judgment of the living that we are living in, so therefore he's expecting us to have these three things in our hearts. Now, let's go to Hebrews 9 and verse 4. The Bible says, Which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold? Wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant? Okay, so those are the three things that's within the ark of the covenant. Now let's jump to Numbers 17 and verse 8. Numbers 17 and verse 8. And the word of God says, And it came to pass that on the morrow Moses went into the tabernacle of witness, and behold the rod of Aaron, for the house of Levi was budded, and brought forth buds, and bloomed blossoms, and yielded almonds. So the, the rod of Aaron, we see that it bud, it, it produced almonds. And what produced almonds? What, what produced the, 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 the plant or the wood or, or the tree to bud is the rain. So this is the rain experience here. Okay? This is the rain experience. This is the latter rain experience. But before we receive the latter rain, we need to receive the early rain or the sprinkling. All right? I'm not saying we're living in the outpouring right now. I mean, I, I know most people, they, they, they misunderstand. They're thinking that we are saying that we are living in, in the latter rain um, outpouring um, time. No, we know it's in the Sunday law crisis that it start pouring. But what I'm saying here, what the Bible is saying, that we need to produce the fruit, but it's through the rain, through the latter rain message. It's a message, and then the experience produces the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. So we need to produce fruit in our experience. That's number one. Now, let's jump to the manna, the golden pot of manna. The Bible says in Exodus 16 and verse 15. Exodus 16 and verse 15. The Bible says, And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, this is the bread which God, which the Lord hath given you to eat. All right. So we know the manna is represented by the word of God that that is that comes from heaven, so we can eat. All right. So the pot of manna represents the word of God that we have to feed on the bread. Exodus sixteen, and we're gonna jump to uh, go back to verse four. The Bible says, "Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven." Now we see the. The, 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 the latter rain language here. I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or not, or no. So the rain, the manna, is also a test to see if you're going to keep God's law. Alright? If we're going to keep God's law. So, the, 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 the latter rain experience is also a test. The, the early rain experience is also a test. All right, so anything that has to do with rain that comes from heaven is a test to see if we're going to keep God's law or not. Most people don't want to hear that. Don't want to hear that they're being tested. But yes, God is testing us if we trust in Him, if we, if we have faith in Him, if we believe what the prophet says. Amen. Now let's jump to um, Zechariah chapter 10 and verse 1. Zechariah chapter 10 and verse 1. The Bible says, 
As ye the Lord reign in the time of the latter rain, so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. So brethren, we need to ask God for the latter rain. We need to ask him for the latter rain in the time. We need to ask him the rain in the time of the latter rain. Now, if we don't know the time of the latter rain, how are we going to ask him for the rain? We need to know the time of the latter rain. I'm not talking about time setting. I'm talking about events. We need to ask him in the time of the latter rain in order for us to receive the rain. So I know this is kind of harsh, but this is what the Bible says. We need to ask the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So when we see the time of the latter rain, then we ask him for the rain. And God will give you the rain. So the, the manna is connected with the rain. The almond, the, 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 the rod of Aaron, represents, I mean, also connected with the rain as well. So now we're going to go to the law. The law. This is what God wants us to have this kind of experience. Jeremiah, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 31 in verse 33. Jeremiah 31 in verse 33. The Bible says, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my what? Law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Here, God wants to write his law in our hearts. That's how Christ can dwell in your hearts. Because Christ keeps the law perfectly. We cannot keep the law perfect by our own strength. But through Christ in our hearts, Christ work within and we work without and keep the law of God. God wants us to have his law in, in our hearts. All right. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 8 verse 16. Isaiah 8 and verse 16. The Bible says, Bind up the testimony seal the law among my people my disciples so god wants to seal us but also through the law he wants to seal the law in our mind in our forehead in our hearts now the last verse for closing revelation 14 and verse 12 revelation chapter 14 and verse 12 here is the patient of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of god and the faith of Jesus so we need to have the righteousness by faith experience we need to keep the law of God those who keep the commandments of God and, and have also the faith of Jesus because through faith we keep the law through faith we have Christ in our hearts through faith we enter into the sanctuary by faith we have the experience of the holy place we have the experience of the most holy place is by faith, by the gold. That's why inside the, 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 the sanctuary, you find gold everywhere. It represents faith, which worketh by love. And that's why Christ wants us to buy the gold tried in the fire, because we lack of faith, we lack of love as Laodicea. So I pray that this lesson was a, was a blessing for those who are watching. And we have to remember that we cannot do anything outside of Christ, but only through faith, only through Christ, we can do all things. Amen.